A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. <sighs> no. Stay. Morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Blyna Pastinyok here in Snowdonia, where it's always raining, but uh, at the moment, not so much. Uh, it has rained though, which is good, because as you might be able to see, this ribbon of tarmac is quite dark at the moment because it's wet, and uh, I would like to get some photos of it while it is wet. So I'm gonna get a polarizer on my lens and um, get to work. Aim of the game today to take some photos of my bike for Mason Cycles, which I've been meaning to do for quite a while. And my lack of fitness is, is embarrassing. It's taken me about 20 minutes to recover from that climb. I've just been stood, panting. Anyway, I shall, uh, I shall find a composition and then we can talk some more. Right, so I reckon this is a pretty good place for a first shot. Uh, as you can see, there are a few layers of tarmac kind of sweeping down the valley. And uh, I suppose I'll set an intervalometer and just go up and down this road and try and uh, try and get some shots of me at various points along it. Um, I think with a polarizer, I can get the road nice and dark, just remove all of the glare, which you might be able to see at the moment because I don't have a polarizer on this lens. But um, yeah, see how we go. Right then, so this is unpolarized and this is polarized. And uh, I'm hoping that I've got an hour or two to photograph the road like this, but I think it is going to dry out. Pretty much all the mood that you might have noticed on that drone footage, it's all gone now. So that's a bit annoying. Maybe this will end up as just another scout. Hopefully not. Also, what do you think of the beard or the lack of beard? I, uh, I had a fight with my shaver the other day, or rather I selected the wrong guard. So that's a bit of a shock. It's growing back slowly. Right, just setting up my interval shoot function. So I'm going to start shooting after a minute or a minute after I press the shutter, shoot every one second for a total number of 90 shots. That should do it. And I'll set a timer on my phone so I know when it's been a minute and I know when to start cycling. Right. Three, two, one, and we're off. I'll tell you what, it's funny. It's not that funny actually, but I'll tell you anyway. Last time I came here, uh, which I think was about four years ago, I made a video uh, and I was convinced then that this spot was uh, a wide angle type place uh, because you want to get everything in. You want to get the twisting road from wherever you are. You want to be shooting at, I don't know, 16, 20 mil, something like that. And it's funny how things have changed for me at least. Uh, Cause I hate wide angle now for the most part. I mean, there are some photos in my portfolio which are wider than 24 mil, but they're few and far between. And uh, yeah, over the course of the last four years, I've really fallen out of love with shooting anything wider than, yeah, as I say, 24 or 35 really. And I think mostly that's probably because it's really, really difficult to shoot with wide angles because, uh, well, photography is a process of elimination. You want to uh, get rid of distractions in your scene. And anytime you shoot with a really wide angle, obviously that gets more and more difficult. But I think it's also that because of things like distortion and the fact that you see things very differently with a wide angle shot than you do with a, a more standard focal length, I think it's more difficult sometimes to tell stories with those focal lengths. I mean, lots of other people take incredible photos with wide angle lenses and focal lengths, but uh, yeah, I struggle. And because of that, I've really fallen out of love with anything that I suppose you would consider wide angle. But yeah, I sold my 16 to 35 a few months ago and uh, I've not missed it once. Oh, also, maybe you can see this, my great fear is coming true. It's drying. Right, I'm gonna keep heading up towards the top, but I must admit, I'm starting to feel a little bit disheartened because that was not forecast. 
Well, as you might be able to tell, the, uh, the sun's coming out, which I'm not massively averse to in general life, but today I really wanted mood, the sort of mood that was around when I first got here. And that's because I'm taking photos of an orange bike. And the reason I also wore an orange top is because I wanted to offset the colors against the light. So when you're shooting with, for example, an orange bike, what normally you really want is um, well, gloom, or I suppose blue light, blue hour, to um, act as like a juxtaposition from the color of your main subject. But, uh, well, the light's getting quite warm now. Anyway, I've taken some photos of the bike against this wall with me sort of acting as like a secondary subject, just having a drink, which works quite well, I think, as a storytelling image, but yeah, it, it would be an awful lot better if there was still mood on, on those hills. Never mind. Well, I suppose if I'm not gonna be taking photos, I might as well try and expand on uh, what I was talking about with regard to wide angle lenses. And if you'll excuse me, I know I look stupid, but I'm gonna put these on because annoyingly it has got really bright. In the rainiest place in Wales, it was forecast to rain and it's not raining. Anyway, yes, wide angle lenses. Uh, what I'm talking about as far as storytelling goes is uh, the kind of thing that I've spoken about before on this channel with regard to things like long exposures. So one of the reasons I try and steer clear of long exposures more often than not is that I find for me personally, when I see those images, there is a distance between me and the photo because I look at it and I know straight away that it's a photo because you couldn't have seen a, I don't know, a blurry cloud or blurry water the way a long exposure achieves that. You couldn't see that in real life. And I feel like it's much the same a lot of the time with uh, obscure focal lengths. So really wide focal lengths and really long focal lengths because that's not how you see the world. So as soon as you see that photo, you know it's a photo. And I think it, it makes it more difficult to story tell sometimes when straight away the viewer can tell that they're looking at a photo. That's my theory. I've discussed it with plenty of other photographers who think I'm talking nonsense, but uh, yeah, that's just the way I, I sort of see focal length. And it's why I love to shoot with like 35 mil and 50 mil really, because uh, you don't have that problem. Doesn't mean taking photos is easy, especially when the light's not playing ball, but um, I find it's easier to, to help your viewer get lost in your photo when you're using standard focal lengths. What do you reckon this sign means that was uh, right at the top of the hill there? I've got absolutely no idea. Although I'd say it's quite symbolic of my day's photography, so maybe it was put there just for me. Anyway, thank you for watching another video that uh, hasn't gone to plan, weather-wise. Although it's not all doom and gloom, I do quite like the uh, the shot that I got of me coming down the hill. I think that works quite well, my flappy jacket. Yeah, I like that. And I think there's a dozen other opportunities there. So I'll go back when the conditions are hopefully going to stay moody and try and get those too. And also thank you for listening to my rambles about wide angle stuff. Often when I talk about things like this, I worry that I, I come across as a bit preachy, which I don't mean to. I'm, I'm just talking about how I think about photography for me and it doesn't necessarily need to translate to how anyone else thinks about their photos. But yeah, that's what I've been thinking recently. Uh, anyway, yes, thank you for watching and uh, Antarctica. So I've mentioned a few times over the past few months uh, our Antarctica 2024 trip. We have some more spaces available. It sold up pretty quickly. We've now got some more spaces and uh, Nigel, myself and Mass will be going to Antarctica in February 2024 for a fly-in, fly-out workshop and uh, I am super excited. Uh, if you're interested, I'll put some more details in the description and I'll link to the videos that I made in Antarctica on the last trip. Uh, yeah, we can't wait. So you can register uh, the link below. Hopefully see you there. And also actually, Nigel and I are gonna to put together some sort of webinar where you can ask us questions about the trip. And basically I'll link to that when I, I know where that's gonna be and stuff. And finally, a big thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. Now I mentioned that I had some wide angle imagery in my portfolio, but I actually, don't think I do. So yeah, it turns out I enjoy wide angle photography even less than I thought, because there's literally no trace of a wide angle image on my website. 
In any case though, if you would like your own website to show your own photography, then uh, Squarespace is a fantastic solution. And I've been asked a few times recently actually, which template I use for my website, uh, and it's Wells. I've used the Wells template for the past three, four, five years I'd say. Before that I used a template called Wexley, which I would also recommend. And uh, yeah, I just think it does a fantastic job of showing a portfolio, but also enabling me to have a blog, uh, information pages for things like my gear, uh, an online store. It's fantastic. So if you'd like to check it out yourself, go to squarespace.com and you can get a free trial. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you'll get 10% off of that first purchase. And I couldn't recommend Squarespace enough, particularly for photographers. But anyway, thank you so much again for watching. I really appreciate it. And please subscribe if you don't mind. Uh, I'm trying to get to 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year for no particular reason, to be honest. I just quite like to. So uh, if you're a regular viewer, but you've not subscribed, please hit the button. I'd really appreciate it. And next time I will hopefully be out in decent conditions. But I've said that about 20 times this year though so far, so we'll see.